So now that I got all the threaded rod done in the trunk, I'm pretty much done back here. The only thing I got it left to do is weld the trunk closed, but I'm gonna leave that for the time when I leave weld the door shut. So now we're gonna turn our attention to the motor. I have to move the Polaris and then move the Firebird and push the motor out because it's on a little dolly and then push the Firebird back because it's put away for winter. It's see, sorry, it's foamed and everything, so I don't want to start it and then put the Polaris back. Um, now, we will have to make an engine cradle. Now, the reason we make an engine cradle is because these mounts right here will not hold a Chevy motor very nicely. Chevy motors are designed to be on like a 30 degree incline on both sides. So I was sent a couple photos by a buddy for a piece of steel that sits against the frame, comes down, across, and comes back up. And it just kind of bolts into place and that your Chevy motor sits onto it. And it, it really does actually look pr quite simple to make. All I got to do is find some heavy, uh, I'm going to say quarter inch plate maybe, and build it out a quarter inch plate. I think I have 3 16 so maybe I'll make it out of 3 16 but who knows. And um, yeah, so we're going to do that, but let's go get that motor and get it over here. So now that the steering's kind of put on hold for a bit, I'm going to start doing something here with the cradle. So I'd really like to catch these two bolts, come down, across, back up, and then catch these two bolts. Um, I'll show you a couple photos that a buddy sent me that kind of gave me some good ideas in the right direction, but it's not inspiring great things inside my mind. But what we're going to do is we're going to get a plate. We're going to torch the plate so it comes around here, over, and then I'll put a zip cut on it and then bend it and then weld it so that way we at least have something to go off of. And if I like it, then I'll duplicate it for the other side and then we will go from there. So let's see what we can do here. Now, before I get some of you guys commenting saying, what a retard, he's trying to cut that with a grinding disc. Here's the secret. I'm not trying to cut it. I'm trying to bend it. So I just ran a straight line with the grinder, and now I'm going to put that in the vise, and then I'm going to try to pry it to see if I can get it to bend. Hopefully, I don't even have to add any heat. So, see if I can get this thing to bend. Ugh. That's a big plate. I'm trying to keep the checker plate down because I really don't like putting checker plate up, especially on derby cars. As soon as somebody sees checker plate, they don't get happy. Nope, she ain't ready to bend yet. I guess she went a little. Let's try and just move it over this way here. right there oh yeah there she goes that's what I want now, I want this around a 30 degree angle and I use the mini grinder with the grinding disc on it because what that does is it gives you a large cut so it can fold on top of itself but it is a lot of work that's for sure and this way here, I actually don't have to cut the plate and re-weld it together. Because when you butt weld steel together, you lose a lot of its strength. So, just keep bending. So now that we got it basically how we want it, you can see those tabs. I may have actually bent it too much, but it's easy to bend back, but it's kind of a little bit farther. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it farther ahead on the frame so I can cut it where I want it to be cut. So now I'm gonna lose the leverage advantage, but I think that looks pretty good. Let's get uh, this thing cut and into place a little bit better.
for just kind of randomly eyeballing with very little measurement, like I'm talking like I didn't measure any of those bends. That basically worked out exactly how I needed it to work out. Maybe I could have gone a little bit more, but like that is actually phenomenal. So I guess the smart thing to do would be make one for the other side now. But uh, wow, I am, I am phenomenally impressed with how well that went in there. I had to do a little bit more trimming just around this back one there. But that went in nice. Um, maybe if I take it back out, I'll do a little bit more trimming around this one as well. But I think that looks great. Now I just have to make uh, one basically the exact same, but backwards for the other side. So let's get started. So, as of right now, this is pretty much done. Uh, the pieces I cut off, I just tacked back on. I switched side for side. Um, they're just there for a little bit of support. They don't touch the frame or anything. It just kind of makes it look a little bit better, I guess. I'm getting pretty tired. I want to add two more pieces to the back of this that run back. But, I don't know where the, trans where the oil pan on this motor is going to sit. So, I don't really want to do that until I get this motor in there. I did uh, torch two holes to pick up the stock Ford motor mounts to tie into the cradle as well. This one here, I just put a bolt through and a piece of steel underneath and I was able to actually weld the steel to this plate. But this side here, I'm probably going to have to come up with a thicker piece of steel and slide it in there and find out where she goes and drill a hole. That was a little bit hard to drill that hole as you may know with Fords, that's an elongated hole. So for me to drill that out to three quarter was not very easy. I'm using 5 8 bolts that way it has a little bit of play and it helps guide it in as it comes down I guess um, Tomorrow I'm basically gonna keep welding at this maybe get that one done and I'm gonna buy some parts for the steering so I'll uh, head to town to do that, but um, Realistically for what I've done today This has been a lot of torching and calculating and cutting and welding in and test fitting and retest fitting and retest fitting but you know what? I think I got a lot done, and it's starting to look really, really good in here. And hopefully, hopefully this will uh, get the motor in there very nicely. Uh, the motor is going to sit quite high. I talked about the motor sitting high before, and I didn't want it. But you know what? I've given up on that. The motor is just going to go in there, and where it sits is where it sits. So I think that's a great day's work. And I'll throw those uh, three photos again at the very end of this video, so that way you guys can see how mine compares to theirs. It's obviously not as nice, but it probably didn't cost me. That one I prob is probably for sale for like $300. This one here was just used from steel I had laying around from the Derby World. So, done. Let's get the, let's get, 